Hello and welcome to our worship uh, this day, this fourth Sunday of Easter. Welcome one and all. My name is Edwin Weber. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Mark's and it is a joy that you are joining me today. Um, a few announcements to get us started. One thing I just want to start off with is that today is often called Good Shepherd Sunday uh, because of the use of the 23rd Psalm and uh, readings in which Jesus paints himself, of course, as the Good Shepherd. Um, so that's something that you will perhaps uh, notice about uh, the worship service today. Also, this past week was Earth Day uh, on Thursday, and, and as a kind of a nod to that and our relationship to earth, our role as uh, stewards of God's creation, you will notice that the liturgy has uh, uh, been tweaked ever so slightly to have a slight focus on our creation. So I think that if you uh, pay attention to the liturgy today, our prayers and the things that we are doing, uh, you will notice uh, that in the liturgy today. Something I think that's uh, particularly fitting considering that the 23rd Psalm is about uh, God's relationship to us alluded to as a shepherd and sheep, uh, a shepherd who leads us by still waters and provides generously and greatly for us. Those are definitely things that we can connect with uh, creation and care of creation in this time. One of the things as part of the services is that we will be starting with a Thanksgiving for water sources. There will be a time in which you can name any uh, body of water that you would like to bless and commemorate and give thanks to God over. So during that time uh, of our opening, I invite you to uh, name whatever water sources uh, you would like to give thanks to God for. Part of uh, this is also that we are welcoming Warren Sailor from the Spokane Tribe of Indians, who is going to speak to us in our Sunday forum at 1045 today on the practice of land acknowledgement. Some of you may be familiar or uh, starting to become familiar with that. We are happy to be welcoming him and to speak about uh, that practice at acknowledging the history of the place and our relationship to the people uh, who have stewarded the land of these places. Also today, we have a new members class, our first new members class starting today. Um, that is uh, beginning at 4 p.m. over Zoom. Uh, we will continue on May 2nd and May 16th. Um, so just a reminder to our new members to join us uh, this afternoon for that. Our Thursday evening Bible studies continue. That's something that I'm leading. We are looking at the, uh, both the writings and the prophets and the post-exilic period. We have finished Ezra and looking uh, at finishing uh, Nehemiah this week. Uh, we'll be moving on to the prophets Haggai and Zechariah in the future. So consider joining us on Thursday evenings at uh, 6 p.m. You can email me if you'd like more information about that. Lots of fun activities going on for our youth. Also today, we have our Fireside Fellowship. It's going to be a game night on Zoom uh, with lots of laughs. Um, next week... May 2nd, there will be foot golf uh, using a soccer ball. Um, and that's going to be something that's going to be in person. So it should be something exciting for our uh, youth. We are, of course, uh, requiring masks. There will be social distancing. Um, it's $5 for each youth. And you can sign up on the youth uh, sign up page on our website. And of course, as always, you can contact Eric Allen if you've got any questions. We also are looking forward to uh, our uh, St. Mark's week at Luther Haven this summer. That will be the week of July 25th. We have a, a $50 registration fee, um, uh, which is, uh, you, you can uh, sign up on our website. Again, if you have questions, ask Eric Allen. It's always a fun uh, event. And of course, Luther Haven are, is taking their own uh, precautions. Of course, safety is a concern for all of us during this time. With that, I'd like for us to take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts for worship this day.
we are gathered in the name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, sovereign of the universe. You first created everything, and yet your work was not done. For you continued to create and form the world, making all things new in Christ. You are our source of life, our wellspring of good hope, our font of grace. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with the gift of water, separating the waters of creation, saving us from the raging flood. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you have revealed your gracious love. As you lead us by still waters, giving life and refreshment, we know of your presence in our lives every day. We give you thanks for crystal springs and dark wells, for still lakes and babbling rivers, for exquisite glaciers and vast oceans, and for the waters of our places, the Spokane River, Lake Coeur d'Alene, Waikiki Springs, and all bodies of water we now name before you. Bless these rivers and lakes and all of the waters of the earth which sustain life. We thank you for your life-giving water which, joined to your word, makes baptism a means of your grace. Wash us clean by the pure waters of your mercy and join us into one, just as all the streams of the earth flow into the sea. Through Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. Worship the God of all creation. We gather to praise the Creator, the continuous source of all living things. Come, worship our God who breathes life into being. 
We praise the Creator who fashioned the forests, whose trees clean the air of this world. Come, worship our God who forms life out of soil. We praise the Creator whose land brings nourishment. Come, worship our God who receives our lament in the wilderness. We praise the Creator whose Son brings healing to all creation. Come, worship our God who sends waters flowing with life. We praise the Creator whose baptism unites us to be one in the body of Christ with all creation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Free us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. A reading from Acts. The next day... The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. A reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, then we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. And all who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I take down... I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> oh, don't you wish that you could have your soul restored in green pastures by still waters? That's an image from the 23rd Psalm that sticks with us. After all this time in the pandemic, with controversies over mask wearing, vaccinations, policing, violence against black people and Asians... This scene is so appealing. People are worn out, worn thin, worn down. To lie down on thick green grass and listen to gently flowing waters, doesn't that sound restful? 
Perhaps you do go out in nature, even out in your backyard for a renewal. Out walking, out jogging, out biking, ways many people find restorative. Maybe carving out time to read a book in your favorite chair or to set up a Zoom conversation with your favorite people is your type of rejuvenation. The Lord does provide us with moments of revitalization here and there. This psalm, however, is more than just a sentimental poem that paints a pretty picture. The shepherd generously provides what is needed but the still waters is soon disturbed. As the journey through life becomes treacherous, the powerful shepherd is a strong protector in dark places and against evil. Right in the face of the enemy, the shepherd is an unapologetic nurturer. The Lord does not promise an easy life. But God's powerful presence transforms painful circumstances and dangerous places. The shepherd confronts our experiences of suffering and alienation. Goodness and mercy pursue you, displacing fear and grief and failure. The shepherd is tough, tough enough to surround you with strength and with love. The shepherd was also a political role in the world of the Bible. God expected the kings of Israel to shepherd their people, but most of them ignored that. What would our world be like if leaders and rulers considered themselves as caretaking shepherds? As a campaign slogan, let me be your shepherd, would not project the image needed to win an election. These days, subtleties are lost in the news and on social media. Strength and power are not evoked by the label shepherd. Imagine a campaign with candidates who try to out-shepherd each other. The Lord had said through the prophets that God's self would take over as good shepherd. Jesus did so until he was killed. When he describes himself as the good shepherd in John's gospel, it is not all sweetness and light. Jesus says there are others you might think could be your shepherd, your leader, but they only do it for their own gain. He is the one who, displace, who displaces the fake leaders, the hired hands, who are motivated by their greed and don't care about the welfare of the sheep. Those who are only doing their job don't have the connection that's crucial for commitment. We have known leaders like that. A teacher who only loves his paycheck and not the children. A surgeon who only loves her reputation and not the patients. A mayor who only loves his position and not his community. Do you need a good shepherd? With all the conflict, divisions, and uncertainty in our society these days, I'm thankful that Jesus is around to shepherd, guide, lead, and protect us. I know there are some in our congregation now who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Remember that the Lord is beside you and will guide your footsteps, or the footsteps of the one you love, right down the path to eternal life. I know there are some of you who suffer the hostility of co-workers, family members, or neighbors. Do you experience them as enemies? Remember that God will give you what you need, even in their presence. The Good Shepherd narrows his focus down to an intimate connection with each sheep. The Lord knows you completely, warts and all. Jesus knows your flaws and failures and loves you enough to lay down his life for you. The Good Shepherd confronts the wolves and protects the sheep from them. He is tough and won't abandon his flock when there is danger. 
Jesus is willing to sacrifice his life for the benefit of humankind and not just his obvious flock, but also flocks of other kinds, he said. Jesus did not die just for those who call ourselves followers. He cares for and protects other people too. The verse about other flocks made me think of people, many of whom have called themselves Christians, who believe their race or skin color or country of origin is better than that of others. And I think about many of us who have called ourselves not racist, and yet we support systems that oppress some people. How do they, how do we, reconcile what Jesus says here with a claim of superiority. At Sunday Forum today, we have a Native American speaker on land acknowledgement in honor of it being Earth Day in the past week. Why did we think, of our, why did we think our style of civilization was superior to the First Nations style of civilization? And how did that belief justify our taking their land. It's also been very disturbing to learn in the last couple of years that white supremacy is alive and thriving in our country. It isn't just neo-Nazis or Aryan nation groups either. There are some churches with a Christian label that believe white male people are the only ones qualified to run the country. That was once the belief of slave owners in the South. It was once the belief of mega rich industrials too, that only white males should run the country. You have to ignore so much of the Bible to believe that. The prophets endlessly proclaim God's intention that all vulnerable people be valued. Jesus repeatedly taught and preached that every person is beloved of God. He was not afraid to go against what society's practices were. Jesus is a tough guy. He walked those dusty roads all over Palestine. He healed some of the hardest cases, like a man who was born blind. He suffered constant verbal abuse by the religious leaders. Right after this conversation about being the good shepherd, they start picking up rocks to stone him. And of course, we know how tough Jesus was when he was arrested, beaten, and crucified. He did not lift a finger to save himself. He had the power to do that, but he didn't. Jesus clearly said he chose the path to lay down his life of his own accord. He also said he had the power to take his life up again. We know that somehow, during that time between his crucifixion and his resurrection, he broke the hold of death. Only a very tough and powerful person could do that. In fact, only God could do that. Jesus, divine Lord and Savior, defeated death. Every Sunday, we celebrate that resurrection power. We are so blessed that the Lord to whom we belong, that the Holy Spirit who fills us, that the God we worship is a strong and loving Savior. We depend on our good shepherd's power to get us through difficult times. That's how we trust God's future, knowing the constant care of the good shepherd. Amen.
Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in response to the prayers of intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O oh God. Grace, gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need, especially Bob, Catherine, Gib, Artis, Don, Heidi, Augie, Phyllis, Eric, Bowden, Chris, Gloria, Arlene, Leslie, Terry, Gerard, Val, Sean, David, Aaron, Janice, Bob, Joyce, Shelley, Cody, Sam, John, Stephen, Sherry, Robert, Gail, Ron, Billy, Lily, Kimberly, Heidi, Neil, and Bridget. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit especially as the St. Mark's community prayerfully considers how to gather for worship in the future. Hear us, O oh God. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you, especially St. Mark the Evangelist. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you. 
trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, I'd like to invite you to share the peace one among the other as you are able in this time. If maybe you're on Facebook, consider uh, greeting one another in, uh, with the sign of the peace in the chat. Or even if you're not, consider a way in which you can express the peace of Christ in the world. And if you are joining us alone today, isolated, please know that we are with you in spirit and God is with you in this time. Also want to take a moment to thank you all for your incredible generosity as you support us through your gifts. You can, of course, give through our website or through a text. Those financial gifts go to support the ministry of things like this uh, video worship that we are doing today. But I also want to take a moment and thank you for all the uh, stewardship of all the gifts that you have, your time, the uh, land that you live on, uh, your gifts, all the resources and all the things that you have in your life that you give as an offering to the world. Thank you very much for what you give. Let us pray. Loving creator, all creation comes from you. Forests, lands, and prairies, wild places, rivers, and streams. As we bring our offerings to you, we ask that you bless them so that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the time for the children's talk. If you have children watching or around the household, please bring them close to listen. A friend of mine went to the country Israel, the country where Jesus lived a long time ago. And you know there were a lot of sheep around there. We don't have many sheep here in Spokane, do we? Once in a while, if you're driving maybe out in the countryside, you might see some sheep. But there were a lot in that country where Jesus lived. And when my friend went there one time, she saw a huge flock of sheep on the top of a bluff. And she wondered, who would have such a big, big flock of sheep? But as it came towards evening, some shepherds showed up. And one at a time, they would call their sheep. And just those sheep would come out of the flock and follow their shepherd. And then another one would call, and her sheep would come out of the flock to follow the shepherd. And eventually all the different sheep went into separate flocks following after they heard the voice of their own shepherd. Did you know, shepherds weren't just boys and men. Shepherds were also girls and young women. And those sheep recognized the voice of their shepherd. In our Bible passage from the gospel reading today, Jesus says that his sheep know his voice. When he talks about his sheep, he means us and all kinds of people. We know who Jesus is, we recognize his voice, and we follow him. The way we hear his voice often is when the Bible is read, when the pastor preaches a sermon, when your parents talk to you about Jesus. There are different kinds of ways 
that we hear Jesus' voice in these times, and it's usually through the voice of other people. So we follow our beloved Good Shepherd, Jesus the Lord. Almighty God, who breathes life into you and all living things, who heals all the world, who sustains all creation, give you peace and purpose. Amen. God is calling us today, leading us into tomorrow. Together, let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thank you so much for joining me today. Easter blessings to you all.